All right, now we're on segment two today, uh, which is Domestic Violence Shelter New Beginnings Gala. And uh, to the right, I have uh, three, three people that are going to be putting on a great show, and they represent um, MCSA and also New Beginnings. And we're just going to start right here. Uh, can you just tell me uh, your name and uh, title and who you represent? Sure. My name is Patty Morrison, and I am a committee member on the New Beginnings Committee. I've been on the committee for about four years now. Um, this will be my second fundraiser because of the COVID we skipped for a couple of years. Uh, I also am a, a small business owner here in Muscatine. I own new uh, Good Karma Jewelry and Bead Studio in Muscatine, and we support the domestic violence shelter also through donating proceeds from our business. So uh, we'll be going out to lots of other businesses and also asking for donations for the for the committee and I help serve on it we do our meetings our basket nights that we put things together and just the overall general coordination of the of the event itself very good hi I'm Judy Yates I'm the MCSA domestic violence shelter manager I've been with the agency almost 26 years and um, uh, I manage and oversee the day-to-day -day operation of the domestic violence shelter and New Beginnings is a huge part of our budget and it's a huge part of us being able to keep our doors open so we're very fortunate to finally be able to have it for the first time in three years um, it's really important that we um, you know have a good turnout and um, our community is always wonderful and great at supporting us and rallying around to keep this resource open for us Hi, I'm Katie Kelly. I'm the program director with um, MCSA. I've been with MCSA um, since April of 2021. Um, I've been the program director for about the last uh, year or so. Um, I'm really excited about this um, New Beginnings Gala because it's my first one that I've attended. Um, I'm super proud of what um, Judy does um, for our community um, at the Domestic Violence Shelter. It's such an important um, asset to our community and I'm super excited about this. You know one thing uh, just the segment we had before and then what I'm hearing now is you know with COVID it just kind of stalled so many things but doesn't it feel good just to get back out and about and you know do life and socialize I just very thankful that you know we're, we're to that point. Um, so what is New Beginnings and uh, when did it start and why? So New Beginnings started, um, let me see, about 21 years ago. Um, we were asking for donations in the community and I came across a couple of ladies that um, had gathered some things for our shelter and they said, you know, but what do you really need? And I said, we really need to keep our doors open. We're grant funded. Um, we can't charge for our services. All of our services are free and confidential. So we don't charge the client's rent. You know, we don't bring in any income of any kind. Um, we really need, you know, money or ways to keep our door open um, because we worry every year with the grant cycle. And she said, let me do some thinking on that. And um, a couple weeks later, she got back to me and she said, I think me and some of my friends are going to have uh, uh, a fundraiser for you um, to raise money. And it started from there. It was completely community ran, um, community thought of. Um, they planned the whole event. Um, us as staff and had some volunteers and stuff help out. And over the years, some of those people have dropped off from the committee and we have, you know, um, got new people on the committee and that continue to stay with us every year. So um, that's how it started. It started because our community cared about the resource that we have in our in our area and um, did not want to see victims have to go someplace else or not be able to leave because they didn't have a place to go. So that's how it started. How fortunate are we, though, as a community? We Muscatine are. is so fortunate um just the the giving that has been being done for for years right for and all agencies i mean we are so blessed yes. in this community i mean our humane society you know the food pantry you know i mean just so many things that the community really cares about and i know that sometimes they might get tired of hearing about oh they just want this or you know now somebody else wants something but you know i mean there are some services and some resources that once you lose them they're gone for good and you'll never get those back so the event coming up, uh, what can people expect at this event? Well, 
we're going to, um, it starts on the 15th, April 15th, 5.30 to 9.30. And when you come, you have to register. Tickets are $75 per person. Or you can sponsor if you're corporate uh, or a company that wants to sponsor. You can do a sponsorship at different levels. And then you get seating depending on the level um, of that sponsorship. So when you come that evening, you check in. There's going to be a champagne welcome. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get... Uh, someone to have some music whether it's some live music just to welcome everybody there and we'll have a, a dinner as well hors d'oeuvres and dinner everybody will sit down and have their dinner um, there will be all kinds of uh, silent auction items we put together baskets theme baskets for all kinds of different things like pamper yourself or um, a barbecue or dog basket cat basket kid basket yeah all kinds of different things together and so then you can peruse the tables I think we had about how many baskets last time? I want to say 75, 80. There yeah, was a lot. there were a lot of baskets. It's, so it's big. Yeah, you go and, and you you know you get your drinks or whatever you want to do and just kind of have a little social time then to look around at, at what they're doing. Um, there's then the dinner there. It's a buffet dinner that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. Then there's going to be um, a program, and we're getting a speaker as well, um, a survivor of domestic violence, to be able to come and speak at the event. That's always That's very, very moving to, to hear yeah. their stories and how they've improved themselves and, and gotten their life together again. So we do that. We have um, a live auction as well with some big items, some jewelry, some trips, some different things mm -hmm. going on there as well. So there's a lot of uh, live auction. We have a grid. So there'll be, um, there's a fire pit that we're going to have on a grid and hopefully a barbecue grill working on that. So then you can, you can do the grid. We have, uh, Tickets, 50-50 yeah, tickets, 50 /50 tickets. Um, so you can do door that. prize tickets. So, and then of course we'll we'll be selling our blooms, yep. our Isabel blooms. That oh yeah, um, those are so that's cute. Not, that's really nice. Um, they're a limited edition um, from Isabel Bloom. They make them special for us. Um, they have a, a special finish on them. Purple is for domestic violence. Um, so they're limited. You can get the the gnome in other colors, but you'll never be able to get it in this purple again. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's specifically for us. And then um, so, and the back of it has a flower on it. Um, we are only um, able to to order and sell up to 400. I know we've sold 200 so far, and we've ordered another 50. Um, they're for sale at MCSA, and um, the proceeds stay local. They stay with us, and they're 35 dollars. Um, so. It's the sixth year we've partnered with Isabel Bloom, and um, every year they do a different one for us with purple sparkle or purple on it. And they are collectors, and people really, really do like them. They'd be great for Mother's Day, Easter, graduation. We'll have those for sale that night as well. Okay. And this year there's a lot of different ways to pay for it. You can pay for those in cash, check. You can use our Square for credit card. We also have Venmo and PayPal. Um, so. Um, just come on into MCSA and we've, we'll hook you up with a gnome. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I like the flower in the back. That's kind of a cool little yeah, feature. Yeah, that's really um, cute. That's really nice. Yeah. So talk to me about um, where the event is and what will people expect when they come in? You know, there's uh, probably a check-in table, things like that. What, what can people expect? So <clears throat> like Patty said, when you come in, um, you do have to get your tickets ahead of time. They are $75 each. So if you're interested in getting a ticket and you didn't get an invite, you can contact MCSA and pay for it through Venmo or um, PayPal. Um, uh, so, you know, you'll receive a packet and in your packet will be your bid number. Everything is done that night on bid numbers. It's solely no cash is, is you know, if, at checkout, if you want to pay with cash, you can. But throughout the night, you bid on things, you you do your silent auction and everything. Um, and as soon as you come in, there is a champagne meet and greet. Um, it's just for people to just kind of unwind. Um, even though domestic violence is a topic that people feel is very private and shouldn't be talked about, um, we are trying to bring awareness to that. But along with the awareness, we are also want people to realize that it's 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 a fun evening. I mean, it's a serious topic, but it's a fun evening for people to come together and to, you know, see people that they haven't seen for a while and to bid on some great baskets and, you know, prizes and things like that. Um, so we do have a, a um, survivor that is going to speak. It's very short. Um, so most of the evening is done, you know, just with, you know, laugh and fun and, you know, people going in and out of the bar and, you know, the food is up until nine o'clock and um, we're having desserts by 
um, Let's Eat. No. West Hill. West Hill Cakery. Cakery. Um, they are sponsoring and they're doing all the desserts for us. So, you know, people just kind of mingle throughout the night. Um, it's just, it's really relaxed. It's really fun. Um, and then we, we have certain times throughout the night that we pull baskets or we, you know, do the 50-50 drawing or the, um, the live auction. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, people were really disappointed in 2019. Um, we were we had sold tickets and we had started getting things to make baskets and about two months beforehand um we had to make the decision to not have new beginnings because that's when COVID hit mm -hmm. and um you know there's about 215 seats available total and um so we had to make the decision not to have it and then the next year it was still like mm, better not have it yet um and then last year we probably could have had it but we were still a little worried. Numbers were starting to go up a little bit. So um, this is the first time we've had it in, in three years and it's much needed. And it's at Geneva. Oh, Golf Geneva Course. Country Club, yep. Um, okay. they, um, that's, a, that's a nice area for an event. It is. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, you know, and they always do a great job, you know, s helping set up the tables and everything. So yeah, um, it's uh, April 15th. Just remember tax day. Um, I guess we could have oh. we could have <laughs> picked a worse day a, to have a, a fundraiser. No, that's a good day to um, celebrate. People <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> um, so, um, but um, it is April 15th. Okay. Yes, it's always in April, but um, that's the year that's the date that was picked um last year for this year so it's tax day and yes. tony tone lockstone he is our mc everybody knows oh, tony that's perfect. so that makes a party right there really yes, it yeah does. he keeps and things <laughs> moving oh he does he's wonderful yeah. he's he's the one that helps pass out the champagne and greet everybody when they come in that's perfect yeah. so yeah. he that role was made for him yeah that's great that yeah he, he's a he's wonderful a he's a huge supporter just here yeah. and then also just everything he does yeah. so another question is how much money are you guys hoping to raise for this event if you if you had a goal well t typically um new beginnings brings in somewhere between 60 and 80 thousand that's wonderful it's it's a huge part of our budget um you know our shelter is staffed 24 hours a day um, we have security there the location's confidential and you know even though the building is owned by the welfare association and we get to use the building um for the purpose of a domestic violence shelter um it still costs to keep it staffed 24 hours a day but that's one thing that is really important to clients when they are leaving a um, unhealthy or life-threatening situation is that there's somebody there around the clock that they can either talk to or to keep an eye on them so that you know if their offender's looking for them so um uh i'm sorry i forgot what your question was one of the one of the um pieces of information that i think a lot of folks don't know about when it comes to funding um, our domestic violence shelter is that um in 2014 mm -hmm. um when the previous owners of the shelter um, moved back to Davenport, they were basically ready to close the shelter because they were not able to fund a working shelter in our community. Um, the funding is all based out of Scott County for that. So MCSA does not have access to um, funding sources specific to domestic violence. So we rely 100% on um, some limited grant funding, mm -hmm. but specifically local money um, to help keep us, keep our doors open. So while we have raised a, a, a great amount of money in the past, I would love to shoot for a goal of 100,000. That would be fantastic. Yeah. There you go. You know? Um, I, like it. I think it would be fantastic to be able to raise that much um, for this much needed um, and to help help with us not having the last three years yes. has really hurt us in it a has. sense um, you know MCSA has been able to keep us going in the community I mean talking about how great the community is I mean Tony and his kids do a lemonade stand and sell cookies and you know really good lemonade too it by is I've heard. and um, his kids do art and they sell you know I mean people care about um and are worried that we're going to lose our shelter so you know i mean people are doing little things all the time there was a you know a bourbon tasting um mm -hmm. that was you know downtown um that helped raise you know like fourteen fifteen hundred dollars for us just 
six weeks ago, you know, so we're very fortunate. But yeah, I'd love to see a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand would be right? great. Let's just up it to one fifty. Oh, like just I, I, going. I'm super. I, I'm like I said, I'm so proud of the work that Judy does in the community and the rest of um, the employees at the at the domestic violence shelter. They provide a service that. Um, you know, if someone is experiencing domestic violence in our community um, and they have kiddos that go to school here, mm -hmm. if, if we didn't have this here and they needed to feel protected, they would have to go to Iowa City or Davenport in order to be um, safely housed in a shelter mm -hmm. um, that's secure and safe from their abuser. It, that would be devastating. Um, for me, when I think about that, moving my children's school, uprooting their lives, uprooting potentially my job um, to, to be uh, to a whole nother large community is a scary thing. And so that that will put that puts a lot of survivors at risk. Mm -hmm. It raises the risk of them being harmed or worse. Um, so the, the service that, that Judy and her staff uh, provide at the DV shelter is it's it's immeasurable. It really goes to re-victimizing them as well. You know, it's almost like they're being punished because they were abused. And, you know, like Katie said, you know, um, a lot of people will just choose to stay because they're worried about, you know, their kid's going to graduate next year and don't want them to go to a new school. They have churches, you know, that they're part of, jobs, you know. Um, and the, the communities in Iowa City and Davenport, they serve such a larger area that, 99.9% .9 of the time their shelters are full so um, they probably wouldn't even be able to get in there and you know and I, I'm, a, I'm a huge supporter of mental health and I talked to uh, Scott Dalkey many times just mm -hmm. on you know just asking him questions on every little aspect of you know service that you know MCSA does and it's, it's there's so many things that you guys do to to give back, so you know, I just appreciate everything you guys do, 100%. Um, is there any special uh, needs for the DV shelter at this time? Um, we're a large house <laughs> <laughs> that houses women and children. Um, you know, right now we currently have three women and five children. Um, uh, three of those children are under the age of three. <laughs> Um, we provide everything for them. Um, they come and, you know, a lot of times they come with just the clothes on their back. Um, you know, we provide food for them, laundry soap, diapers, wet wipes, you know, feminine products, toilet paper. Um, imagine what you go grocery shopping for in your life with your family. We need all those same things, you know, aluminum foil, baggies, diapers, wet wipes, you know, dish soap laundry soap, bleach, cleaning supplies. I mean, but we just go through them at a larger rate. Um, you know, you've never seen anybody so happy to get a case of toilet paper than me. <laughs> I've, I've cried getting a case of toilet paper. I'm serious. I mean, there are things that we would have to go out and buy as an agency that we just don't have the funds for. Um, but how do you not have toilet paper? I mean, you know, or just the basic needs. You know, a woman that's leaving and she doesn't have a job and doesn't have any income or anything, how do you tell her to try to make her diapers last longer? I mean, you can't, you know. Um, and those, those are things that you can't buy with food stamps. Those are things that, you know, are expensive. Um, so we need the same things that everybody else needs. And if anybody wants to donate anything like that, they can take it to MCSA and tell them that it's for the domestic violence shelter. I stop over or, you know, Katie and some of the staff come over to the DV shelter. <clears throat> Everything gets brought to us. Um, so, you know, underwear, socks, kids' pajamas, um, things that when the women are packing and throwing things in a bag that they just don't remember to grab, bras, you know, things that, you know, they just forget to grab. So in the, in the DV shelter, you mentioned, um, three adults and five children right is that is that about how many that stayed there in 2022 then or what is, any stats on that if i may you can go ahead and get the stats okay yep, so that's it. just who's currently there right now okay okay um it's a four bedroom house and um one of the bedrooms is handicap accessible so right now we have um somebody or a family in three of the bedrooms um, uh, we have had just a little bit of a stint with COVID, so we are trying not to double people up, but we sure. can. 
Um, but in um, last year, we served 39 clients. 22 of those were women and 17 were children. Um, so that's how many we housed. But another number that I find, well, a couple numbers that I find to be really astonishing is um, we had 47 women call for shelter last year that were okayed to come to shelter, but for whatever reason chose not to. Um, due to the dynamics of domestic violence, average woman leaves seven to 10 times. She maybe, you know, um, found a friend to stay with. Maybe they made up and she decided not to leave at that time. So besides the clients that we did serve, there were um, 47 women and 42 children, um, equaling 89 clients that were okayed to come to shelter and just chose not to or called back at another time. Um, you know, so to me, that's a lot of people reaching out that were looking for services that may have changed their mind at the time. Um, we had 407 crisis calls. The crisis line rings into the domestic violence shelter. Um, and for shelter nights, if a woman comes in and if she stays for 30 days, that counts 30 nights. Um, we had 2,809 shelter nights. Some people stay longer than others. Um, so that's how many shelter nights we served. We were not empty at all last year and we haven't been for the last several years. Thank you for sharing the stats. That's, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's good to know stats because that tells a story. Um, last question, how can people get involved? Well, I, people can get involved several ways. Um, obviously, um, purchasing a ticket to New Beginnings would be fantastic. Um, purchasing the gnome from Isabel Bloom would be fantastic. If people are interested in volunteering, um, with any of our programs at MCSA, including the Domestic Violence Shelter or any number of programs that we have, they can call us at 563-264-3278 uh, and talk to a front desk staff member. Um, they can let, let us know which program or, or if they have an interest, um, we can help direct them to the correct program for them to volunteer. Um, also, you know, we've, we're consistently posting needs lists on our uh, Facebook page, um, at our MCSA Facebook page. So folks are welcome to uh, help provide those items to us. Um, and, and like Judy said, when somebody brings um, a donation to MCSA and says it's specifically for the domestic violence shelter, we make sure that it gets mm -hmm. over to the domestic violence shelter. So those are some ways that folks can get involved, absolutely. Donations also for the event. We're oh, going out to the local businesses and asking for donations for baskets, still sponsorships, whatever they would like to do in that area would be very helpful as well as purchasing the tickets. Um, MCSAIowa.org is the website that you can go to and under services, domestic violence shelter, mm -hmm. there's more information also about the event on there. And I think you can link to that to get tickets as well. Yes, so. you can. Yep. That's another way to do it. So. Well, very good. Any last, I won't say last words, but any <laughs> any last uh, thoughts you want to um, i just like on? to throw two things out there. This really doesn't have anything to do with um, our new beginnings, but I think it's really important that everybody learns or knows the crisis line number because it is answered 24 hours a day and whether you you know need need to know it to pass it on to somebody else or somebody that is watching or listening um, needs it, um, it's 563-263-8080. It's a pretty easy number to remember. So, um, you know, if we could post that or, you know, get that word out there, it's really important. We all know somebody, work with somebody, have a family member, you know, somebody that has either experienced it, grew up with it, or is going through it. So I think it's just really important that they know that resource. And the last thing I'd like to say is um, Beth here in town, um, she does pet fostering. Um, due to the dynamics of domestic violence, a lot of victims will not leave because they won't leave their pets. And we cannot have the pets at our shelter, but Beth Van Zandt, she um, pet fosters for us. And I know I, I have two dogs, and if I had to leave my home, I would stay if I had to leave my dogs, only because a lot of offenders will use the animal and say, you know, you leave me, I'm going to harm the, you know, our pet. Um, and a lot of people when they call will say, well, I can't come to shelter. What else can you help me with? Because I won't leave my cat or I won't leave my dog. Um, we have uh, crossed that barrier mm -hmm. for the homeless shelter as That's well great. as our shelter. And it's really important for people to know that because really a lot of victims will stay and continue to be abused rather than lose their pet. 
So, and it, it's so refreshing to uh, hear at the at the event, hear the stories of a survivor, of how they have you know overcome these obstacles that they've had in their lives, you know, some terrible times in their life, and with the resources that they've been able to have here at the domestic violence shelter and to better their lives and to move on to uh, more safer places. It's just really inspiring to hear those stories, those success stories. Yeah. Judy won't toot her own horn, but the amount of people who have um, benefited from meeting Judy and receiving services from her shelter is overwhelming. Yes. Um, I've heard several oh, success you, stories. It's the community. I've um, heard several success stories about how her empathy and um, her work with clients has helped them to make better choices moving yes. forward. And we're, we're so very proud of, yes, of what are. everyone does. I'm over very there. passionate about what I do. Um, I grew up in a home with domestic violence. I've actually spoke at New Beginnings and told my story, which um, a lot of our staff um, did not know. Um, it's not something I share. Um, but with my mom's permission, um, the last time we had it, or the time before the last time we had it, um, I actually told my story. Um, I just don't think that people realize what children growing up in a home with domestic violence, screaming and yelling, and crisis and chaos go through. And, you know, I know that, you know, at some point in time there may come a day where we can't have our shelter doors open anymore, um, but I don't like to look towards that because I just can't imagine what our clients would do if they didn't have that option. Um, so um, myself and, and many of the staff have been there for um, over 20 years, so we're very dedicated um, to helping women and children, and it's we're saving lives. <sighs> well, I appreciate everything you guys do. This is, this is just another amazing event, um, you know, part of this uh, series that we just talked about today. But... Um, Thank you so much for showing up to the show. And, um, well, Muscatine, there you have it. You have uh, two events coming up, both for absolutely amazing causes. You have the first one, Rocket in the USA, which is March 11th, this Saturday, 5 p.m. at the Muscatine Armory. There we go. Thank you, Chad. And then also on April 15th, also known as Tax Day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for reminding us. Um, and that starts at 5.30 at the Geneva Golf Course right there. And uh, amazing causes. Just another reason why our community is amazing. We care. We have hearts. And it's just, this is this is wonderful to, uh, to have people that, that care about each and every person in our community. So thank you, Muscatine. We'll see you next time. And remember, be your best.